Here I stand in the Mila, the Jewish quarters of the Medina of Esruia, formerly known as Magador. In the 18th century, before and even to a time period after, this portion of the fortified city was home to a striving Islamic community. Today, as you see, it's only just a thing of the past. Although people live here, all of whom are Muslim, the only remembrance, a reminder, are the derelict buildings and heaps of rubble. Who were these Jews of the Medina in Magador, who according to history were great tradesmen and were favoured and respected by some of the greatest sultans of the past, including Mohammed ben Abdullah, the grandson of the famous Black Sultan, Musli Ismail Ibn Sharif. The answer to the identity of the Jews who once lived here during the period of the Great Sultans isn't found thousands of miles away in what is known as the modern state of Israel, where mass migration from Morocco has taken place, but right here in the Medina walls. Here lies the true identity of the Israelite community that once lived here in the Asian synagogue that has been restructured and rebuilt. Here lies the truth that many seek after. Inside this restored synagogue, there are pictures everywhere. Historical evidence is right before my eyes. This extraordinary building has much to be desired. Here inside the synagogue, known as the synagogue of Hamim Binto, we find some very interesting pictures of the Jews of Magador. Upon closer examination of the four pictures, it is clear to see that the Moroccan Jews of the past were highly melanated beings. Here we see black Jews walking through the Medina. Below we see these same dark-skinned Israelites at the Bab El Masa in Magador which was built in 1769 during the reign of Mohammed ben Abdullah as part of the reconstruction of the fortification of the city. As you can see, there is an engraved inscription above the arch as to when and who constructed this forted gate. In this recent picture of the same door, a close and more detailed inscription can be seen. This picture isn't quite as clear, however, the fourth picture clearly depicts these ancient Israelites who lived in the Medina as Mennonated people. Wanting to understand more about the pictures, I asked the guardian, who was unwilling to go on camera, to inform me of what these pictures represent. These were his words. Is, is Muslim, is Muslim, is Jewish together? Muslim, Jewish together. Together, see, avant, avant the deuxième guerre. I was not at all surprised by the Guardian's statement. From a Quranic point of view, the term Muslim, meaning one who submits, predates Muhammad. It was time to explore the rooms. In the corner, there was another picture of these black Jews at the Bab El Masa, and an even more fascinating one on the wall in this dark room. I noticed these old pictures were surrounded by modern photos and portraits of individuals whose appearance were more European than that of the Menelated people in the older pictures. Is there a connection or has someone placed them there with an agenda? I was told that this is Hamin Pinto, the chief rabbi of the Israelites of Magador in the 18th century. This time period coincides with the days of Mohammed ben Abdullah, the black sultan of Morocco, and the black Jews of the Mela, who I prefer to call Israelites. Knowing these historical facts and looking at the portrait of Rabbi Hamin Binto, is it possible to believe that he was born a Jew from the same stock as the dark-skinned Israelites in these pictures? I have no doubt he existed. Yet looking at the picture portrayed of Hamin Pinto on the wall and knowing the Jews of Magador 
were black in the 18th century. One has to consider, do we have here another attempt to create conspiracy? Another historical cover-up? Is this picture a true representation of Rabbi Hamin Pinto? And if it is a true portrayal of him, was he then a missionary who ministered unto the people? Who we see in these pictures that resemble our brothers in the motherland regarding their features and appearance. Personally, the portrait of Rabbi Hamen Pinto looks more European Jewish than the Moroccan Sephardic Jew found in the modern state of Israel and nothing at all like the Jews of Magador in these pictures found in the synagogue. As I made my way upstairs to explore the rest of this restored house and synagogue, there were more paintings, none of which depicted Israelites that looked like the people in the pictures who the guardian of the synagogue spoke of. According to the history of the Medina, the Jews of Magador had great relationship with the Muslims prior to World War II. But it doesn't come as a surprise to me, for according to the Quran, the Prophet Muhammad taught the teachings of Noah, Abraham, Moses and Isa. After all, unification, they were one. Once in the Medina, in this fortified portion of the city, the Jewish community were in the majority here. And they lived side by side with their Muslim brothers and sisters. But what happened? Question after question needs to be asked. Did they intermarry with the locals and no longer practice their way of life? Did they leave? Did they go to the Western Sahara? Or even to the Algerian desert? What happened to these ancient people? What happened to this ancient Israelite community? To these indigenous black Jews? In the 18th century was born Mohammed ben Abdullah, the son of the Sultan Abdullah, who according to history was much more open-minded than some of the prior sultans. In fact, it's recorded that he made treaty with European countries such as Spain and made trade agreements with the French and the English and had good working relationships with the Jews of Magador. Mohammed ben Abdullah's grandfather, Musli Ismail ibn Sharif, is said to be so proud of his accomplishments, his pride and blackness and he formed the Black Guard, made up of some of the best and beautifulest of Morocco's tallest and blackest of men. My question is, where did these black Jews of Magador go? Who were great tradesmen and had high respect by the sultans of the past. Did they go further south into Africa, deep Africa? Or did they mingle with the locals or the traders with who they traded from Europe, intermingling and creating genetic changes, family ties and alteration of their genes. Who are the Jews of Morocco in the state of Israel today? What happened is my question. Many unanswered questions, much to learn, so much to research, but one thing I do know that the indigenous Israelites who were here in Magador in the days and during the period of Muhammad ben Abdullah were melated beings and features and characteristics as those of indigenous Africans. This I am sure of. When will mankind learn distorting historical truth can never bring harmony. Lies only bring more lies and increased confusion. Truth will always surface. This is universal law. Regarding the true identity of the Jews of Magador in the 18th century, history unveils their blackness.